everyone welcome to my channel today's session you're going to learn about docker and in a more hands-on and we'll go very deep dive into most important topics of course i know it takes some time so that uh, you guys can join it's all okay let me in between uh, that time prepare all the codes and slides that i have prepared just a moment okay looks like yeah this looks fine just one thing and that's fine just move it get to here okay so let me know if you guys can see me or hear me any voice problem or all good just confirm me and um, i will i will just quickly get started you know when you're joining do let me know from where you're joining and what are the doubt or what are the challenges that you have faced while learning uh, this Docker? Even what are the challenges you are facing right now when you learn Docker or anything that you have in your mind? Do feel free to let me know that, and of course I will answer all that. Okay. Okay. All good. Now that is that is what I'm looking for. Thank you, uh, Deepak. I was just waiting for that. I think I can go ahead with the uh, slides. Uh, just just you know because. Many people are actually uh, you know, asking that Sandeep start from the very basics and then slowly you go and uh, you know go to the complicated part. Okay, and uh, for that reason, you know because people will be joining from various background, right? Those who already have some knowledge and those who doesn't have any knowledge on Docker, right? So we'll be, uh, I'll be here. <laughs> yes, let me make you moderator. I don't know if you can. Okay, I don't see any option here, but yes, thank you. Thank you, Guru. Um, let's see. Okay, so everyone joined. Great. Now, I'll just start with the intro a bit, okay? And then we'll, of course, this is a more hands-on session. I'll go to the hands-on part. Okay, let's see. I don't know why I'm becoming as a blurred person. Let's see. Maybe this is because of the slide. I have to just move to the next slide. Let's see. Oh, now it's all coming fine, I guess. Is that uh, screen coming blur for any reason to you guys also? Let me quickly check how I can make that not blur. Just one moment. I think could be one of you. Yeah, just, just wait one minute, okay? I, I know what are the, there are many ways. I can just get rid of the, the blur part. I'm just checking. Okay. What are you recording? It's fine. Let me, when I am coming as normal, this is coming fine, not blur. And when I'm sharing the slides, Oh, now it's coming fine, I guess. What do you guys say? Let me know if you can see the screen properly. <sighs> oh, now good, yeah. Sometimes, you know, happens with software. Okay, let's uh, start with the very, basically, like what exactly is Docker? Now, you guys already might know. I will just repeat myself. Uh, that Docker is an open source uh, platform used for developing, shipping, and running applications in isolated environments. And, uh, and these isolated environments called containers. And these containers allow for easy deployment and scaling of application across different computing environments. Now, what we do with Docker is that uh, we get into one of the very basic problem. Okay, What is the basic problem? We then we develop application in our local, uh, you know, local computer and all that, right? And then when you just shift that same thing and you try to run other computer, there you might see problems. And what are the problems you face? Because you're not aware. Maybe uh, it's the there, the the software that is required to run the application might not represent, or some binaries that is required to run the application is might not represent. Could be any reason. That for that reason, your application not able to start or work properly, or not functioning properly. Now, what Docker or this virtualization platform scheme, uh, what solving that whatever you require to run the application efficiently, put it into a container or some kind of virtualization. So that the moment you create an image from that and you 
uh, run the same image in other uh, platform, other computer, it should run exactly the same way. Now, the like, Docker is also a form of virtualization. But if you think about there are virtual machine, you might just say that, okay, something there's a virtual machine in the cloud. Then why exactly you need uh, this Docker? Because like, virtual, virtual machines kind of doing similar stuff, right? Now, first of all, virtual machines are heavy, okay? You have entire OS and that OS have n number of things, okay? Because OS is not simple, it's complicated. It have kernel, it have this and that, lot of softwares, right? But maybe uh, not all required to run the application properly, okay? You just maybe need the basic uh, OS requirements and the, just like basic kernel and basic things and mainly application and application require binaries, okay? That is all, what required, okay? In container, you do this, the exact same thing. So you just pull the things that is necessary to run your application and you don't pull entire operating system features and all that, okay? That's how you make lightweight virtualization, okay? And you, using this lightweight virtualization, you can run uh, like same application, same like virtual application or application in the sense in a in a either virtual machines or maybe in a physical computer. But you can like run multiple copies of the same program in more efficient way. That's how you are doing the research consumption properly. Okay, this is how you uh, like normally what happens even you sometimes want to run application and want to properly utilize the CPUs, RAM, and there's still a lot of unused resources, right? So Docker is kind of used for tackle that problem also. There are like, many features are there, but if you like any recruiter asks you like why why should you use Docker, you should, it, it helps us, us the generation or uh, encapsulating the application and then run in any environment. That kind of features Docker give us, okay? Now, of course, uh, there are, uh, I'm wondering like, uh, I think it's a very good example given by uh, Guru. It is like in ordering the dish you want and not the entire restaurant. Yes, so you don't want everything, just whatever you need, you just picking that one. It's a good example, okay? Now, let's go to the next one. I think uh, just just a little bit, you don't have to go very in depth, okay, about this. Uh, and you don't have to like, go through all the text. Just understand this is the basic Docker architecture, okay? And like Docker now works the client and server kind of model, okay? Where client is a software or the uh, tool or also just binary that is installed in your computer. And Docker host can be anywhere. Could be your own machine, could be a remote machine. You can communicate over the API, okay? And what client, you're just asking say Docker run something or Docker pull something. You are sending the command to the, the virtual uh, machine or virtual host or the main host machine, okay? Where it will do all the stuff for you, okay? This is to kind of a decoupling the entire architecture, okay? And in simple, let me just hide myself. I think I'm not that kind of required here. Just to see. In this architecture, you as a client, okay, uh, as a client, if you just, the client is the application that you install, the client, the Docker command that you run, okay. Host is the, is the machine that you have, like where it exactly have the container, you run container, the image gets stored and all the other Docker daemon is done, okay. And the images, now that images that you pull or say that uh, the, the, to run the containers, you need the images, okay. And that images you can pull from the like Docker Hub or maybe AWS and ECR or maybe Google Registry. There are a lot of registry options available. You can pull from anywhere, okay? And then you run in this Docker host machine, okay? I have given two, two architecture examples. You can go for either one. Both are kind of similar, okay? Now, I think the Docker command that I was, I was discussing, let's look at that one, okay? So you see this, this, let's just go clear the screen and let me know if the screen, uh, the command I'm running is visible or not, okay? I'm making it big, but please confirm me it's visible. We'll go through a like basic documentation because it's like, I mean, everyone coming from various backgrounds, right? That is the reason. And just, okay, I'll zoom please. I think that's, that's a visible, right? Let me know if it's not visible and uh, still now, I will zoom a bit more, okay? Now, see that you run the Docker commands, like say Docker. And Docker have multiple commands. Okay, if you just go up, like run, execution, PS, build, pull, push, all these commands, or say management command, like builder, build, container, container command, and all that. Then 
the swarm commands or uh, like other commands and all that okay so you have a lot of lot of features and commands right you use this uh, command called docker right this is the the front end or the client okay and there is uh, in your machine if you use any software like docker desktop or kind of similar stuff okay there you have the docker uh, that host is running as per the architecture still blurred Yeah. I don't think it's close. Doesn't look like it's blurred. Yeah. Let's see. Here, yeah, I'll just zoom a bit more, as required. Okay. Now it's visible. Okay. Okay. So this these are the Docker client command. Okay, because in the architecture I was explaining that right. that in that slide see these are like the client part is that docker command okay now the daemon is running uh, inside your docker host that the client communicate with the daemon to do things maybe you are run, uh, running container maybe you are pulling images maybe you are removing images maybe you are stopping a container start stop do all this kind of operations you are doing in the docker daemon via the client and client is what the client is that particular docker command the docker command that you are running from your os okay or cli okay that is the client so now you understand what is the client what is the uh, daemon and the registry where you are getting the images now we'll do we'll be doing a lot of the stuff so don't worry this is just the start right now okay now let's just go to the slides a bit i think a bit more i will just show you your yeah, docker client like the, the the client i was explaining right so docker run build pull push all this command you run is by the client you run that okay and docker daemon is that uh, where it does actual image management container management networking volume management and does all that stuff okay and docker registry is where you store image okay i will show you how to build the image and how the build image sizes are and all this kind of stuff but that need to be stored somewhere so that we can share with other people other teams other companies as required right that are called docker registry and this docker registry there are many registry available and the registry can be public or private for example uh, if you want to uh, like every kind of platforms a docker hub or say aws ecr or the azure repository that uh, image repositories everywhere you get the option to be either make it a public or the private one okay and based on that the cost also varies okay now let me just go to the next one and i think we'll be done with slides very soon like docker images i will show let me just you know i have one simple uh, like say i have multiple application of course to today discuss and we'll first cover the basic and then i will show you how to can we can uh, do multi uh, level uh, multi level build and all that will be coming slowly but let's understand the images but because because we'll be working with the images a lot Let me quickly show you. Let me just make that code. Okay. Let me clear the screen. I think it's very cluttered right now. Okay. So how we can pull an image? Because let's if you see the slides here, we are doing a lot of operations, right? Pulling the image, we are building the image, and all that. Let's start with the pull first. Okay. So that you understand what exactly image you are talking about. Let's go there. So Docker. pull nginx okay if we do that what is doing okay it's first this docker client actually go to the uh, docker daemon that is in the uh, in my computer while i'm running that using docker desktop okay that the, there we just client saying that to docker machine see pull this particular image okay and with that they just pulling the i mean then then the docker daemon then pulling the image from the docker hub because we didn't configure any particular or we didn't add any particular domain uh, docker uh, image registry here right so that's why it's pulling the image from because we didn't given any full url okay we just say nginx then of course you try to look for into the default registry what is the default registry is the docker hub so this image got downloaded this nginx image got downloaded from the docker registry okay or the docker hub now how to see the image so you can call it docker images and see oh i have lot of lot of images oh 
so many images. See, this is this is what I should be more interested on is the nginx. Okay, and every image, okay, every image that you build, that you download or pull, have a specific size and many layers on it. Okay, and every layer have some certain changes. Okay, now this nginx that you have pulled have like uh, let's say latest one. Okay, uh, created. How many days ago? Two, uh, two months ago. And what is the size? 192 MB. And the tag is latest. Okay. And if we want, we can pull maybe a particular version and all that. Now, wh where is this Docker Hub and all that? Let me show you that. Because you need to understand um, like where these images are coming. That is very important to know, right? So let me go through that one. Just a moment. Let me go to the Docker Hub so that I can show you what I was telling. Okay. I hope you guys can see the. Okay, here. So let's go to Google and let's go to Docker Hub. So this is the default Docker registry where you have your most of the images. So let me go with. I think I don't have to log in. So if you go to Nginx. See, first, uh, the, the official registry of Nginx there, and then you have a lot of tags, okay? The one that I, I just pulled now is the latest, but you can just go for any version, any particular, uh, you know, that the SHA code of any that repo or the release uh, release part, all that version-wise, you will get, get it here, okay? So that is the Nginx official bit. Just like Nginx, there will be, for example, Node.js, okay? Just giving example. Like official node repo, so you can pull the main uh, like node just if you want to run run it from you as a computer, okay? And there are like like this, there are a lot of images, and we'll be learning more about it when we cover that custom Docker file, like how to use the Docker file and build images with that, okay? We'll come to that one. Let's just go back so that I can show you a bit more. So yeah, so there there you have the images, right? But you see, I have a lot of images and I'm not actually going to use that much. How can I de delete the image? Because we are pulling the image or we might we might just build the image. I'll show you just in a short while. But how to delete them? Because you see, 1 GB, 1 GB and all this larger images is there, right? So if I want to, for example, delete this particular image, okay? I can either remove by the name or the easy way is using the ID. So Docker. R M I remove image, then give the ID. Okay, I will read must be multiple repository. Okay, maybe I'm using that multiple places. Let's see the command first a bit. Docker R M I, I think, given the right one. Just maybe try to remove the other image, my image name. Docker. Let's mm, see, note good. This one, any example is fine. Oh, Docker RMI remove image. Okay, must be if this is the dash F, I think. Yeah, delete it. If you, like, I think, oh, I remember now. So, what happened, you know, why it was not deleting earlier? Because I have references this particular base image with other images. So, I, I just stack the existing image with other images. This is happened. When you build an image, okay, and that image you push to the remote repository like Docker Hub or maybe, um, you know, ECR or like wherever you push in the remote repository, then you have to remove the original uh, that reference first and then the main image. But I, I was not that patient with my demos. So I'm just using the dash F command. So you will forcefully unlink like this, this one. Okay. I had this linked. So this remove that and untagged it and then deleted the image. Okay. Now, what if I if i go and uh, manually remove all these uh, docker images oh god it will be too much time taking right what i can do i can run docker prone i think prone probably let's just see uh, docker rmi i might have to see the exact command but that way i can just remove the all the images let me just quickly search for it okay i was exactly forgot the particular command so docker yeah, wrong images 
let's see docker okay docker image pon i was just missing that image part okay docker system pon is there but ah risky ka but now one one disclaimer by the way this command are actually a bit riskier because um, you know if you have any proper uh, any images chances chances are less but it might get deleted by maybe you know for any uh, how to how to say it in a more polite way maybe not you'll not that aware and suddenly you did it something important so don't don't use that in general if you are say development test machine okay but if it's in a very important machine and you're doing a lot of uh, very critical development use with caution okay let's just run it and say it's working what this will remove all dangling images okay so <laughs> i'm just removing all the dangling images and let's see let's clear the screen and docker i think still will be a lot of image So maybe I have to run Docker system. Oh, I think this exact same command. It's called system. And this other risky command. So make sure you know what you're doing. Docker. All stop containers. All network not used with the last container dangling images and Docker build catcher. Still, I think I think there's a command also just to delete all the images. Let me quickly look at. So Docker, okay, prone all remove all images. There is a mm, Docker prone all probably. Okay, yes, there is a something like Docker image purge will remove all. Again, these are the commands a bit riskier. So if you are going to run, make sure that you know what you're doing. I'm just showing you because you know while developing, you will be developing lot of images. You will be pulling lot of images, and you might don't need that anymore. Okay. in those cases it is all fine so let me see what are the images i have available now still quite a lot right now if i just run docker images purge what happened it's not removing Let's see this one also should work docker or am i mm. give me one minute ah, this will lock just to see So this is the command Docker RMI dash F, and this is to get all the images. See, Docker images. Yeah, it just remove all the images. But again, this is a risky part. You should first, you know, make sure that not not anything important. Yeah, I think it's just someone posted it. So it is very easily findable. Just Google about it. I also just Google right now. Okay, one thing I heard about, like many people tell me, Sandeep, do I have to? remember all the commands and everything the answer is no you don't have to actually uh you don't have to remember all that thing what you have to do is that keep a note okay i also have a note i forgot to open that one i have a gist uh, and now if i couldn't find it i have a lot of notes i <laughs> it will be difficult initially but maybe after 2 3 minutes i will be able to find it but anyway it's very easy to search most of the commands that i'm showing you for example in this particular uh you know slides these all commands are actually i found that easily in the internet so you don't have to actually remember all but 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 the basic commands you have to remember and what are the basic command i was telling so basic command in the sense docker that docker images it will show the images docker rmi remove the one image or for example uh, docker run or docker build those are the very basic command those command you should not forget because interviewer technical around uh, maybe they ask you to build the image and for that small thing also if you do google search that might make a negative impact so you have to be prepared before if you know that in an interview or if you are guessing that in the interview that they might ask you docker related question or they might ask you to show that we should already have the basic command if it's very complicated it's okay to search okay because nobody can remember everything in the world okay so it's okay that this is now let me quickly come back <laughs> yeah that is it but in the interview they will ask so you have to prepare well okay and now um, there are many interviews where they have given me very complicated scenarios and like i just ask them that okay uh, this is i don't remember this is very complicated one can i just make a google search and within just one google search i found it and do it and they're fine and i also got hired in that uh, particular interview so it's it's not like they will not hire you if you just google one complicated one but they may not hard if you do very simply get simple related searches okay that's the difference part 
Okay, there is one thing to force delete all the come um, all the uh, then yeah the, the one that I just use that one also like this one or what the guru have given both are will work. Okay. Okay, now let me just quickly go to the next one. Image part, I guess I guess you guys learn that uh, how to pull it and how to uh, delete it. Build. Uh, let me show you right now so that you will have a view how to build the basic image. Now I think. Okay, let me give you uh, guys give you a repo which is have a very basic Docker um, basic uh, source code and their Docker files. Okay, let me push it. Status, I think already pushed. So let me just give you the remote repo. SV. Let me just go to my. Let me just show you. Okay, where to find it? I will paste that uh, link in the in the comments but let me still show you this is the link okay let me paste it let me know if you guys can uh, see that particular or not i will just show you once again yeah this is the this is the one just go to my linkedin sorry not linkedin my that uh, this profile uh, GitHub profile and this is microservice CI not CI sorry I think no this is not it sorry something is problematic let me quickly fix that part okay let me stop sharing from here instead use the Original tool to present, okay. Share screen, okay. Wait, wait, I will just share that. It's not this one. Let me just go back and go to my profile. And there, repositories, yeah, Docker hands on deep dive, okay. I have uh, pushed the very simple codes. Let me just, I think this was bad one, so I'll just remove the guy. Yeah, this is the this is the link. Okay. GitHub is in Docker hands on. Just go to my profile and you will find it in the first link. Okay. Just go. And this you will find that very basic uh what do you call it? Very basic uh, source codes of Golang, uh, Node, Node.js, Python, and Rust. Okay, and then just containerize it. And I will go and show each and every this uh, Rust application, Python, uh, Golang, and Node.js how to containerize. Very simple. And then we will slowly, slowly understand like uh, how to do the complicated multi-staging build also. Okay, just one minute. I will give you guys one or two minutes more to just go and fetch the repo for you. Okay. In between, why not I first set up my part? First, you'll we'll start with the Node.js because that's most easier. Okay. Let me clear the screen. Let me know if you guys are ready. If you guys are not able to get the repo, any issue, just feel free to let me know. to this channel we definitely let me do that okay yep. Yep, i think now i will go ahead and start it Uh, Docker comp Docker compose I will lick because it's a very um, you're going to have a lot more sessions okay so we will simply do that uh, later okay because one session if I just include the Docker compose also it will become very hard for many people hey guru welcome okay guru will be helping us um, for ongoing question and all that and of course let me start with the actual demo part. Oh, not just actually, I mean, we'll be learning a lot. This is just the starting, but okay. Let me start sharing the screen. Okay. 
Okay. I guess, hopefully you guys can see the screen now. Okay, this is one very simple file, okay? And I think you guys, if you have started with a Docker file, something like, like this simple, you might already seen it. Uh, just go through what it is, and I will just quickly uh, teach you what how to write a Docker file, okay? First, this is a base image. Like I have shown you the Docker, uh, that Docker Hub page, where uh, there are a lot of images. So you'll be using this form command to pull a image first. And then we'll set a Docker uh, like home directory for that particular application. Then we'll copy the necessary package file so that we first not uh, we'll just first install the packages and all the basic things like prepare the the environment first, okay? And then we'll make sure all the necessary modules install or the packages install. And then we'll just copy our source code because see source code keep changing, but the package least you uh, very rarely change. That's the reason, okay? And then whatever port, if it's a web application, first of all, then we'll expose a port. If it's not a web application, just don't need to expose anything. And in the command, just run what is the thing that you want to run. Like it's not JS, for example, if it's the Go application, then you might want to run this like binary, the generated binary, okay? For example, if it's the Rust also, you might just need to run the, the final binary like this. For Rust uh, and uh, Go, it's simple, uh, the final binary. For Node.js, okay, or Python, you might want to use the uh, final uh, build. Okay, not this one. Yeah, this one. You need to use the Python that uh, language binary and then the script because this is integration. Okay. Okay, now let me teach you that uh, Docker file in more in depth. Okay, so that you guys understand that better. Okay, and okay, yeah, Guru. Uh, question, can you hear me properly? Yeah, I can hear you properly. Okay. Let me start sharing. No, no, I think wrong one, sorry. Let me start, just one moment. Mm, uh, share screen. Uh, while Sandeep is looking, mm. Sameer has one question. Is Docker Swarm used in IT industry? Uh, I can answer that. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. yes and no. It depends on the context. For developing, yes, but for enterprise level, no. Docker Swarm is not the most capable. It's a cluster-wide thing. I think it's better to use something like uh, uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Yes. Or, you know, or even, if you, even if you use ECS or maybe another other cloud software, is better. Okay. Better. Yeah. Docker Swarm is there. Okay, for some cases, but a majority of people don't use the Docker Swarm. Instead, they use the uh, that Kubernetes, uh, ECS, yeah. all those kind of tools that that people use. Don't yeah. they don't use that so much? Even yeah. I also, I think many years never use the Swarm because I didn't get any requirement. But because see, I'm in the DevOps market for a long. I think you know, Guru also in the DevOps market doing a lot of stuff, and we don't get that much of Swarm to be honest. Okay. Swarm can be is used in their location normally in on-prem premises, like mm -hmm. not on cloud, on-prem, like, but not in prod, mostly maybe in dev, yes, just to test out things like on a multi machines, but no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you guys have any question, keep asking. We'll of course answer because this is the interactive session and like, we are live, we don't have any hurry to finish the session and it's a workshop kind of session. So you should be also like, quickly pulling all the codes, try to run the build and doing all the stuff. You'll face issues, share with us, and you might be able to just give you the solution just during this session itself. That's the more essence of this particular session, okay? Because, see, you guys will see this kind of session, any YouTuber, any people doing it, like, this is nothing extraordinary. The extraordinary part, me and, of course, Guru is also here, and I didn't see Guru's message until now. So, Guru is always ready from the beginning itself. Now, thanks. Guru's here and we'll be, of course, together doing all that. Uh, 
one good question sir can you give example is cmd and entry point okay i will i will definitely uh, come to that this is very good question by the way because initial level i will also be confused like why entry point and why the cmd okay okay let's now understand the docker file syntax first okay because if you are a DevOps engineer, you 99% chance you're going to work with that the continuation, especially Docker and the Kubernetes. Okay, we'll, we'll end up using that. Okay, so let's understand this Docker file uh, syntax very thoroughly, and then we'll start building the images. Okay, because if you don't understand this, then you cannot use uh, build the images use like the Docker file properly. Okay. Yes, we can. Okay, so let's start with the form part. Okay, if you see that. Like our last, um, that particular the example I was showing you, which is uh, necessarily that other thing. We just quickly add a screen. Let's see if we can do that. I think it's fine. I mean, I will show you anyway, shortly. So from part where we first use the basic images, okay, and there, uh, we okay. I think better. Okay, stop screen. If we can just share the entire screen, then I can quickly go and move forward. Guru can handle the question. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I'm okay. handling the questions. And if it's <laughs> too complicated, then I'll ask you. You can explain. Yeah, yeah. Please. Okay. So see this uh, note just explanation that we are just checking, right? Uh, this this part, okay, Docker file. You see, we are using this form part. So from Node.js 14, this form part. Why use that one? Because we need, I mean, of course, if you can write a uh, like entire thing from scratch, this is a very complicated part where you fine tune the words, which is very complicated. Okay, not everyone does that. Instead, what is very common and what people use that they use a base image. Okay, and in the base image, you have all the basic necessities to run your application. That kind of requirement already fulfills. Okay, for example, you are running Node uh, Node.js, so we are using the Node.js 14, could be Node.js latest, could be any Node.js version. That is our application required. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the again that slide to learn the next thing. This is the form. Okay. It specifies the base image for Docker image being built. This base image must be first instruction in the Docker file. For example, like from Python 3, or for example, we use the Node.js, right? That one. Then this run command. Okay. So why this run command? If you see this run for Python example, or maybe notice also, I think we should be using, let's see if we can just use the uh, run command or not. There it didn't, yeah, there I use. So after copying, okay, I'll come to the copy later on. So we the user run command to run any command, okay? And any, what kind of command? Any, like say NPM or maybe for example, pip install, whatever is that image is supporting. So image has to have this NPM, uh, NPM image has to, for example, for notice we had the NPM, so we done it. For example, Python, we had this pip pre-installed in this particular image. Okay. That's why you will do run the pip command and install. Okay, because this command you can run inside the image building state. Okay. Temporary state. Temporary state is, is gaining because uh, it is running this particular image in between. So it's running this image. Okay. Then it signed the particular like kind of a container kind of environment where it's running this particular command exposing and doing the entry point. Okay, I'll come to the difference between entry point and the CMD a bit later. But think about this run command is used to run any command. Now we're running pip, we're running any uh, command, but we can also run shell scripting. Suppose you have any shell scripting and in shell scripting, you have a lot of other things running. We can just go ahead and run that simply. Okay, that is the run to run any command. Now let's go back to the slide. Run runs a command in Docker. This command can be used to install packages, update the system, or build for application. For example, run apt update and or apt get install some package name. Okay, so any package installation, like any Linux or any that particular uh, base image, whatever, have the capability that you can just run any command. Okay, and then comes the copy and add. Now, this very looks very similar, but understand what this means. Okay. Copy and add copies file from the host machine to the Docker image. Okay, so what what this means? It means this copy command, the first dot or the first particular path represents the your local machine from where you're running the command, the Docker build command. Okay, and the second part, a second uh, say uh, path 
फाइल फोल्डर पाथ और फाइल पाथ दैट रेफरेंस टू द कंटेनर सो दैट दैट दिस इज अ कंटेनर टेम्पोरली रनिंग फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर इमेज इन दैट इन साइड दैट दिस इज दैट कंटेनर पर्टिकुलर पाथ और वॉट एवर कंटेनर यू गोइंग टू जेनेट फ्रॉम द फाइनल इमेज बिकॉज दिस इज अ डॉकर फाइल फ्रॉम द डॉकर फाइल वी जेनेट द image image right and using that image we run the container so that container will like it's pointing to that particular container uh, path of the container okay so this copy command or add command copy the source to the destination and destination in the sense the image that you are building that images is a uh, uh, folder okay that is there you can add that one okay now let's come back to the one so Uh, copies file from the host machine to the docker image and copy is prefer over add because it has fewer side effects for example copy uh, this particular path for example copies the app.py from the uh, host machine to the app directory in the docker image so that is very easy just use the cop uh, copy or i mean add comments there i think copy get the less references okay it just direct uh, make a i think copy by reference add means the direct value adding part something is different is there i cannot remember right now but is is very uh, say common or mostly used part is a copy part okay and then work directory okay this sets the working directory for the subsequent instruction in the docker file for example work directory like this one here okay we are setting docker uh, work directory as app because we are copying all our um, say source file in this particular app directory and we are saying this is the current working directory the moment for example even if you um, say A container is running. So we we generate an image from this, and in that image, from that image, you create a container. The moment you go into interactive mode, and I'll show you what interactive mode I was talking about. There, if you want to see and uh, see the logs and all these things, the moment you interactive mode, you come to the shell, it will come to default this folder because this folder is set as a uh, default directory, okay, or work directory you can say. And the moment you're running this command, is that means that the moment you set as a work directory. your current working directory like for, for example what is our my, my current working directory p w d so present working directory that is this right the moment i move to say cd dot dot to change it to something else the, then i run p w d see it is no more ras source code i am into this particular uh, like this parent folder of that so this is the present or working directory is right that what happens when you say work directory it's not present direct uh, kind of stuff but it changes the current or whatever you are in this particular uh, building stage it's moved to the app folder as current working directory and as a work directory okay so that is what is does then there is in the after you are setting the work directory you just run the build command for example i'm uh, build or maybe package installation or dependency installation you do using the run command run command you know that just run any kind of command use the run command and install all the requirements and this is common for say uh, python example or for example in the node js also you see we are running run npm install we are installing dependencies or say go app uh, there also you run go mod download so it's install downloading all the go dependencies and all that so this this what what happens here it simply run the uh, like package installation or dependency installation okay let's go back then env suppose uh, there are many cases you want to set the say port or you want to set the environment as a virtual not virtual i'll say the environment variables okay and in programming language you can access and based on the programming language how you access the this environment variable or os level environment variables change but this is a very good feature when you want to pass some values from the docker environment or any external environment for example or maybe you're passing somehow to the uh, like build environment and that that environment variables will be available to your application or the other codes okay and you can utilize as you wish that way okay then there is this cmd and ng point one question uh, one question okay. has come uh, from mohammed he says mm -hmm. how proficient one needs to be in writing docker compose files mm -hmm. as i believe it's used in real time also in companies do they use private base images of os or entire app to build on top of it mm and this one right yeah correct right so this this uh, docker compose i have seen uh, yes is used by many company that's why the reason i want to dedicate a session on it okay not 
combine this but provision in the sense you should be able to map the services because why you need docker compose right if you're just running one container there is no need of docker compose you can just go ahead and run docker run and then just do it right you need docker compose when you have multi tier application that you want to experiment or you want to run maybe via the docker compose for example in a single application uh, single environment you want to run one uh, front end one back end one db db could be postgresql could be a thing or maybe one cache engine multi tier for example a cache engine is there like a, uh, redis or cmm cache then you have a uh, like back end maybe node js front end maybe uh, say react or angular and you connecting all that services okay because if it's all this container run separate separate okay and you didn't say in like networking there comes some networking part also which is networking and service all together you are kind of linking the application there this docker compose comes very handy okay and using docker compose you can run uh, like all these services just by using the service name or depends on wherever you are depending on using that particular name itself you can uh, just call the apis and all that okay that way you don't actually need to know the say internal ip addresses of the containers if any okay if you are configuring that way because there are different mode of switching uh, the container network part like uh, i think bridge mode and there is the host mode a lot of other things are there which i will not complicate today but this all these things are there where you need to you know, map all these things but the compose you don't have to worry about all that of course you can configure but you don't have to worry about all that just by setting the depends on uh, that particular keyword just you are linking the different application and you're running it okay again i think another thing i need to clear, clear up that don't think that in production application you will be using a docker compose so <laughs> guru can you just like did we ever use docker compose in production environment no never, uh, <laughs> never. not even like docker no. okay i will summarize what doc uh, sandeep is saying docker compose you need to be proficient but you don't have to remember everything uh, normally docker compose is used in local environments like on your laptop or in the worst case scenario on the build server in the worst case scenario but not even in build they don't because each is a different component you don't need to and for local development my suggestion is you don't need to be proficient if you are using some editor like vs code there is a plugin to do everything so please mm. do not waste your time in learning all the syntaxes because each application is different and those things yeah yes. and number 2 uh, your question was also do they use private base images yes they do for example a company can like for example my customers will never pull from <laughs> yes. public and see another reason also there because you no know, previously docker didn't had any limits Okay, so you just pull as many images as you want, and they see there is a huge bill because the moment you upload anything in the cloud doesn't cost anything because it's all all cloud free. The moment you pull anything from the uh, say servers, that charge like a hell. Okay, yeah. and every company is struggling with that because of the data charge. This is a hidden charge. All hmm. the data charges are kind of a hidden. They don't know why it's happening, how it's happening, but it's happening. Okay, yeah. now to avoid that part, they put the limiting. But hmm. see your your. your application is kind of very like very fluctuating sometimes it scale up sometimes scale down okay every time it scale up every time there is a new pod or say new uh, instance get created every time you need to pull the images from the say image repository think of those cases that there is a limit your application are scaling so kind of a uh, like this is a very good uh, use case where you are application not scaling why because you are pulling your image from the docker hub and your limit got crossed Exactly. And your application is scaling for that. Yeah. So what you so, will get is image pull error. Something yeah, called image pull, pull, pull error. So and remember, uh, in cloud, uh, as Sandeep mentioned, when you go and let's say if you create a one GB image, worst case scenario, and you pull it ten times, it's ten GB, and you will get a bill of like thirty cents or something like that. Yeah. Imagine if you do it on a daily basis. For a year, you will get the three thousand dollars. Yes, and if you if you think about companies, do I? The, the, I'm a company. I have a container registry. I have millions of customer. Think yeah. about the bill of that person daily. Don't just yeah. go to monthly. Think about daily. Exactly. That's why when you are going like in production environment, we don't use the public repos. Production is always the public. Okay. Like mm. ECR, like let me show you. Okay, I think that will make sense. Yeah, uh, that will make. Showing also 
using public repositories is a security thing. You never know what you're pulling. So always build your images from a trusted resource and then store it locally and go through scanning. Okay, so always do that. See, for example, AWS, we have this ECR, okay? Mm. And ECR, we can go and see, I have a lot of, lot of example, okay, for different, different demo, I've used it, okay? Mm. And uh, we now we are going to create a, this is a private repository, and there is a public repository. If you see public registry, I have two public registry, what I've shown the workshop frontend and backend is there. But most of the cases, you should not be using public repo. Yeah, you can do it, okay? One thing, I will give you one example. For example, you want, you are for to build an image you have maybe using node.js any particular version or maybe python version that you are building multiple times for example in a day you have 30 times your build is running and it's possible for big companies right if you just pull 30 times 40 times just 100 times some limit will cross in the docker hub and they will stop giving you start giving you error pull error image pull error you don't want that to happen okay instead of that you just get the image and push that into the public repositories okay then you just pull the images as many times you know, it will not give you error okay that is the beauty of it but uh, same for the private repos also the moment you just create a repo there you have the option either public or private okay if it's for your your own customer never use a public repo you should be using a private repo so for example this is a sample uh, or say workshop repo for example workshop repo okay there, tag utility. If you just want to, like, if you already have one tag, you don't have to be modified. Okay. Then you just, by default, it's disabled. Otherwise, you'll be, you might, if you just pull so many tags, so many uh, layers, and you might get a bill if the image size is big. Uh, otherwise, I mean, if you want, you can enable, but I will suggest, like, it's disabled. Okay. It's your own setting, by the way. Okay. Now, the vision warning is kind of a security feature. If you want, you can enable encryption. If you want, came with encryption. You can enable, but remember, it might cost you, okay? This example, I'm creating the repo. See, this workshop repo got created. This is the private repo. And how to do this, uh, kind of utilize this one. Now, first, let me build the image, and then I will. I think I'll show you how I'm going to push it, how the authentication work and everything. But just to show you example, this is a private repo that Guru and I was talking about, okay? No, I think this is one, I think, okay, let's, let's clear the misconception. Base image, you must pull from the GitHub, right? No, why? Never. <laughs> because the base image, you should pull from the private repo. Best practice, uh, if it's your private repo, okay? Because uh, you might have source code, you have, uh, you have, if you want to reuse any particular image that you have, uh, if it's not a particular image that you want to use, but any generic image you want to use, what you should be doing, First, fetch it from the fetch it from the Docker Hub. Okay, it's not the GitHub. First, fetch it from the Docker Hub. Then you push that image to the as a public repo because it's common for everyone. Nobody going to steal it, right? Nobody want to steal a source code. First, yeah. you push it to the public repo. Then, in your like from section, you mention the public repo. For example, this one. Okay, I have the public repositories, right? And I want to use this particular uh, image URL as my Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Varesh, uh, think it's okay. a very simple idea. Your source code should idea. be in GitHub. All your binaries, like base images, should be somewhere else. In in Git, uh, like uh, for example, your base image is a binary, right? So mm -hmm. it will never be in your source code. So you create Docker file, something like that. Yeah. Docker from doc a Docker file will be in your source repository. But your um, base images can be in Docker Hub or in your private repositories. Mm. See, for example, from the form part, instead of like I have, I mean, I didn't notice, but I also have this one. Okay, I was getting error when uh, giving demos when creating demos, so I had to do like this. I'm just I push that Golang image into my ECI repo, and I'm pulling from there, so I don't get that pull image pull error anymore. Okay. You can do that way. And that is best practice, I will say. Okay. Now let's mean, let me go to the that sharing slides. Uh where it is. Mm -hmm. Screen. Yeah. Okay. Let me remove this. 
Okay, so here you understand that uh, expose part, expose part is just to um, expose the port. If it's a web application, you should be exposing the port, maybe 8080, maybe 443, whatever is the port that you're running your application. Okay, CMD and ND point. Now this specified the command that is used to run the Docker image is started as a container. Okay, CMD used to provide default argument. Now CMD is what? Argument wise. CMD is provide the default argument uh, to the command while entry point is used to specify the main command okay because when you give the cmd you are giving part commands right maybe Pyth uh, python app pi or maybe docker then uh it's not docker and uh, maybe node and then the script file and if you are passing additional option then comma and then additional option you're passing the option so you can just pass on like that okay but if it's a script maybe a cell script or something entry point script if you have that you should be using this entry point okay where you just the entry point itself is a script and not a command. Command CMD for what? Command that you're running. Entry point what? Entry point script that you want to run. That is a different. Okay. Like for example, uh, I'll give you an example. I think that will serve the your like all that. Um, okay, is it mandatory to expose? No. Uh, sometimes I, it's not mandatory because when you're going to run your uh, you know images, cloud service provider, even if you don't find that expose they will just, uh, you know, uh, add it by default, okay? If they don't find it. Because while running the container, you can pass the override option. In that override option, if you don't mention anything, it's a web application, the cloud service provider give the default values, okay? What to uh, one. But there are many uh, places that you want to run the Docker uh, images where you don't need to expose, and that's fine. This is not a mandatory. If you... Uh, want to expose a port you do it if you don't want to export more maybe for example it's a one of uh some kind of data processing you're running if it's a, if it's a data processing job or some uh one of let's say temporary thing you're running then there is no point having a, a port open right so you don't need it like for example if you're running a batch job which goes and updates yeah, a bad job. good yeah. example yeah batch jobs is which you can run every like run books which goes and updates some stats or i think for example, cron jobs. Suppose you're running a cron job to process some data or sending alerts, whatever is the logic is there. Okay. You're running cron job or batch job. For those cases, you don't need to, don't need to expose the uh, this uh, expose part, expose porting part. Okay. That is one thing. Yes. Welcome, Mohammed. Okay, now let's look at the this entry point and CMD part. What I was explaining in proper way, so that you have no confusion anymore. Okay, let's let me go to that part. Okay. Sandeep, I'll be back in two minutes. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. No problem. Okay, let's come here and see the screen. Okay, see, I have this for example, right? Let's go to the uh, Node.js part. Okay, where I'm using this CMD. Because why CMD? Because I'm running Node.js index. This command, node, when you run the container, is going to start as node, then index.js. And index.js is in the uh, uh, this uh, source app folder where Node.js binary is already having this base image and base image getting downloaded from, for example, Docker. Okay. Then it's installing all the dependencies, copying the code and all that. Then I'm exposing five, uh, 501. So, sorry, 5001. So, in that port, I can access the application. And note index js now index is to go out. Let me show you. Okay, this is a script where it's listening to this stat, uh, this the main root path or service, the kind of an example uh, pass where I'm saying okay, or uh, this is sample is kind of there. Okay, so mainly the application is the application or logic part is in the index.js file. And when the Docker container starts, I want to keep it running by do it running this node.js and index, it will keep listening to the um web uh, say. Or API request and all that, okay? Or serve the content over the web protocol. So that is, I'm running for the Node.js and Index.js. This is how I run it. But exact same thing. If I don't have a, say, I don't have to run a command, but it's a binary itself. So if I can generate an application binary that doesn't need any so Node.js or any particular uh, programming language to be installed at all, for example, then I don't need it, right? So for that, I can just use, for example, here, uh, go uh, for go example. You see, for go app uh, uh, example, I have this work directory. Okay, just I'm pulling the basic uh, Golang from. I will say explain that why I'm doing it to avoid that uh, pull error. 
and then I'm creating a, a work directory. Then I'm first copying the go mod and go sum. Go mod is where we have, for example, if you have any uh, any modules that you need to run for the application, that all the modules is in the. By the way, I am running uh, a go uh, kind of go for DevOps uh, series. Okay, I think tomorrow I'm going to upload one video for the like writing small script. This is a it's already started. The basic and adverse construct part is already covered. You might go to my cha uh, channel if you want to learn Go. Now let's come back to the uh, Docker file here. Okay, Go mod have the uh, dependencies. Go sum has the checksum. So checksums are what to make sure you are going to pull is proper. Nobody is tangling or say uh, kind of doing anything bad with the source code somehow. That to check that. Okay, that handled by Go mod for the um, then all that uh, modules uh, URL and the Go some to make sure all this are proper and validated. Okay, then you run the Go mod download. It will download all the requirements or all the uh, modules. Okay, then you are cop you are copying all the Go files. Okay, and then you are running Go build and you are you are creating this particular binary that is Docker Go app. This time you are running this command that is fine, but you can just run the uh, this command also. I think entry point. You can do run all the executable. See, it's asking for executable. This is the executable. You can run this one as well. Let me just remove it. Yeah, you can run this way because you can, again, you can run as a command or run as an independent. I would prefer the entry point because this is this is direct uh, binary you are executing. Okay, so that is one thing you can do with the entry. I think I did that example with Rust probably. Let's check. Or oh, Rust also I use. But again, both are usable. You can use either one, but Best suggestion I can give that if you, if it's uh, the entry point here, like, both are possible. I'm just giving example. Both can be possible, but entry point I will say better to give the script uh, that execution path. And if it's just uh, command wise running, you can just run that particular one. Okay, like in Node.js I was doing this. Right, that's okay. optimized for what? Yeah. 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 Go on. Uh, Sandeep, one question like. Uh, before we execute the CMD or the enter point, there is mm. question: mm. What is difference between run and CMD mm. and enter point? If you can explain. Ah. Okay, okay. So, run is to run the different different commands, but run expect it to either get success or get failure to have the build as success because you are using this Docker file. This uh, Docker file, for example, just give me one example. Okay, because, <laughs> because you are using the the run command to get something, maybe a command to be uh, execute completed and all that. But if you run a if you use the run command and it keep executing and executing, the build will be stuck. Build will not process. Okay, build will think that we are we are running some uh, task. To make the image ready, okay, it will not, it will never complete. So the moment we are running this uh, Docker run command to run a command, and we want a success because, and if this run command is a failure, the build is failure. Okay, it will not work. It will not continue. Okay, just like run npm install or run uh, go mod all the stuff. But command is expected to run only when you start a container. Okay, then. Then only, so it will not just like if you just even mentioning run or entry point, it is not running immediately. Okay, it is just will run the moment you run a con as a container. That is the difference. Run to run the uh, Docker any commands. Okay, run to any system commands or any kind of uh, command that is available to the base image or you are introducing via any other script. And CMD or entry point is would be will be executed when you are creating your creating or running the container. Okay, that is the major difference between the run and CMD or ng point. Okay. okay. So, or for people who didn't understand the complicated, very detailed uh, answer from Sandeep, think two things. Hmm. Every Docker has something called a context. Hmm. A context is something like, it has two contexts. One is build context hmm. and one is called run context. So the, all the run command, copy command, all these are to build the image. So it is run in the build context. Mm. The only then the only two things which happens in the run context is 
once the build this image is created you get a binary image then when you say docker run only then the command cmd and the entry point runs anything else is part of the build context so it's expose run copy or dir all this is to build your image so what is called a build context and to understand more have a look at this document which of course is not working because to copy and pasting is not allowed for me uh, just search for docker build context and the first link you will get it uh sandeep maybe you want to open your browser and mm -hmm. search google for docker build context okay let me show you them just one yeah. moment uh for some reason i'm not able to paste urls in the chat window <laughs> i think yeah we can i will just give me just in our uh in our private chat okay mm -hmm. then i will share i think you don't have that okay. Yeah, okay. uh, this one. Yeah. yeah, this is the one. Can you tell? Then give me that URL. Yeah, I gave you the URL in the private chat. Yeah, I got it, got it. Yeah, this one, I think. But, okay. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait. Hold <laughs> on. No. It'll work, it'll work. Okay, this is the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is build context? As you see, when you do a build, it copies and file system context please guys uh, uh, read it later but this is the url maybe you want to paste it in the thing but understand that run copy expose are these to tell docker to build the image the cmd and the uh, and the and the entry point is to run once the image is built just keep it um, simple yeah uh, i know sandeep has all the enthusiasm to tell you in all the details but for a layman like me who doesn't understand a lot of complicated things then this is the best way to think about it so search google for docker build yes. context you will know everything a lot of context text file context local context a lot of things are there okay uh, exactly. i think it could be a separate session if we just start explaining only the context <laughs> exactly so that's okay. why uh, as i mentioned uh, mm. If you want to go into a lot of details, you can sit here for 100 hours and then still not be enough. But please go and read yourself as well. Yes, because a lot of lot of things are there. You just have to go and because it is so natural to us, we don't even mention sometimes. But for you, yeah. might be it's, it's complete new, but it's okay. Just go through and. Uh, Mohammed, uh, uh, um, oh, Naresh, by the way, uh, thanks for mentioning me, but trust me. Uh, uh, Sandeep and myself and other people are passionate about it. Some answers I may know, some answers Sandeep will know. For example, Sandeep is a king in AWS, obviously. Uh, but don't try. It's not only me. It's it's a it's a combined effort. Okay. Uh, you see, Google is our friend. How <laughs> <laughs> do you remember all that thing, right? That's yeah, exactly. You search about it. So there, you should find the answer. Now. Where to set environment with compose? Compose you can do. Yeah. What is the Docker in? So just just search about it. You'll find a lot of options. You'll find honest. the thing is. Um, yeah. Please be very careful of what questions you ask. If this is hmm. stack specific, for example, oh. if it's Node.js something like that, my hmm. suggestion is. Uh, by the way, dot env file is normally related to Node.js as far as I know. It's not related mm -hmm. to Java for sure. Java does yeah, not take Python also. Time. Python also I've seen getting used, but what I will say, don't. I mean, any normal that inform variable you can just pass on that in the Docker file itself. Mm -hmm. Or, but but best suggestion I will say, don't put the secrets in the Docker file. That's exactly. the biggest mistake you can do in your life. Okay. Yeah. What we should be doing is instead. You should be having secret services, okay? And there are a lot of, like, say, I think Docker, uh, there is um, AWS Secret Manager is there. A Magico Vault is there, very good one. Exactly. That one you should be utilizing to get the uh, secrets, okay? Don't use the Docker, uh, uh, this environment uh, file and all think that. You have this. Think Docker as, as uh, uh, your home, yeah? 
whatever private you should not be putting in your living room don't do that for example all the secrets which sandeep is having is hidden in his um, in his uh, maybe uh, in his water tank maybe i don't know <laughs> but yeah so be careful remember your docker images can be read by other people so don't put anything which is secret like database username passwords or or something like that uh uh yes, yes we never yeah, put should... yeah uh, that's also a good idea but my suggestion is remember think from a developer's perspective let's say you are good at dot env i don't understand then i have to create so it's better you say ex env there is a command called env env this env this and document this remember creating a docker file is easy but documenting your repository and you have to specify all these things and run through tools so that don't remember uh, in 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 me and sandeep were talking when i came to kolkata oh by the way thank you for the breakfast um <laughs> what we call wtf principle what the f star star k when you write the code three months later if you open and you say why the hell did i root that that's wrong and when you share the code with you someone else it. yeah why hmm? the why, yeah. yeah so this is what it is so Tell make me sure if you guys can oh, hear me okay yeah yeah we can yeah we can hear you i think it's guru as you guru come back okay you're back yeah uh, yeah so oh you could not hear me no you are you are you are out for few second you may need oh, to repeat i'm really sorry about that uh, i think uh, yeah by the way i'm getting a gbps on the 18th so i'll be five times five times as faster uh, so as i mentioned document your document write comments make sure that someone who opens a docker file understands what it is because if you put it in an env file you won't be able to do okay sandeep can you do me a favor share your mm -hmm. screen and mm -hmm. and any of your app if you do docker inspect then it will tell oh. you all the yes that would be yeah, i think good, I, uh, uh, yeah but i plan everything right <laughs> i clean up everything <laughs> okay uh, no but you just built one right now right i think yeah we'll i think yeah we'll we'll build it we'll build it and i will show the docker inspect and see the environment variables yeah, exactly. we'll do that today. so just wait for some time guys mm -hmm. let him finish one and uh, go mm -hmm. or node js and then once he runs it then you can ask the question so be bit patient because uh, obviously sandeep uh, has only one brain and two hands and one mic <laughs> uh, so just be just wait for some time yeah okay so if you guys can see uh, this is the, i think here we are using let's see where we use the environment in python or we can just add also if it is not a problem mm -hmm. just go with the node js and we can just add one environment so node pod or something like that so let's just add a env here okay env say node node env or say node port as port the or say 80 for example this is in one environment variable right now let's go and build this so go see dot dot okay oh, sorry this one hands on deep dive and by the way you guys by now have the source code and this is a very simple one okay we will we'll be coming to the complicated a bit later on so git then is sorry cd node js1 i think we have a docker file here so docker build dash t t for tag tag example uh example or show workshop docker workshop docker and this is how you give the tag call it v1 and the dot means where do you have the docker file okay a uh, docker file path i mean right now this docker file path is still is saving in the uh, this particular folder right but if the docker file the file name was not a docker file it could have been maybe docker file xyz okay or maybe it's in a different path okay then you need to give the that proper path here okay? so right now docker file is my dot means what current working directory there i'm just running this okay and we'll go and we'll uh, start uh, can you remove issues thing and also you need to hide our pictures because i think it's kind of oh okay, okay. yeah yeah okay i think yeah i think yeah okay yeah thank you now good yeah all good okay 
So yeah, it's, it should, okay. See the build context. I think was that uh, Guru was talking about. Hmm. And see, this is this is what it is. Now, hmm. just let me hide this one. Oh, sorry. Clear the screen. And if we use Docker images, that's why I told you to learn the basic command first. So people hmm. was saying, Sandeep, I have generated one image, but where to see it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't know the basic Docker image command, so they know. Why don't you Google a bit? Ah, now you tell me. Let me Google about it. <laughs> so, this some sometimes most basic command should remember. If not, go and search in the Google. Or I will share this current document also maybe after the session to my LinkedIn. Okay, so you just go ahead and check that one. Okay, so there if we use Docker inspect and then this uh, particular image ID. Yeah, see. There itself, if we just go down host name, user, environment, uh, not there, maybe this bit down somewhere it should be. Yeah, see, this is the environment where I mentioned what node port is 80. Mm. Isn't this you now? Think about that. You created a Docker image where you posted all the environment for any reason. You pushed or injected all the environment variable into the image. Anybody can just go to this particular uh, pull the image and they see this inspect one and just go and, and they can just have all the uh, that your secrets to them and they can misuse that, right? So mm -hmm. never push or uh, inject your secrets as an environment variable. I mean, you can hold the value uh, in your application, that's fine, but don't inject in the Docker image. You can have wall, you can have AWS secret manager. You use those services to pull the uh, very secret values. Okay, that is the right way. Yeah. Any any point you want to cover, uh, Guru? Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, close issues, Russia, so that they can see the code. Uh, the the, huh? uh, the uh, you see issues. Uh, no, not not that one. The 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 chat uh, issue, Russia is yeah uh, yeah yeah that one. Close that. No, not that one. Uh, oh, okay. You should. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So remember, you can put like default values. Like for example, if it's a development server, you can. Oh, did I lose? Yeah. yeah. So for example, here he put expose like node port is equal to eighty, which is fine. So it explains the code. But don't say db user is equal to <laughs> root or db password is yeah, equal. To. Yeah. Don't put those kind yeah. of stuff. What you can do is, or expose the node env db underscore user is equal to invalid user. So that you can put in a value which will never work. And you mm -hmm. tell the documentation saying, please override it, else the application won't work. Put some crap in it, like node port is equal to 9,000. I would say, don't even, don't, don't even use it. Don't even yeah. add it. That's even better. Okay. Yeah. Just, just the necessary thing to run the image in your local or anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. But to run in the production environment, what you need, you should not be having that. You should be yeah, exactly. pulling that from the somewhere else. That should it's be. It's like, you know, uh, uh, Sandeep showing his bank account. No, it's a secret. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. True. <laughs> yes, so I see the different, different layers that we have. Like, mm -hmm. The more you, am I, okay, one thing important. When you're building a image, okay, the, and, People don't know that, I know. The more command you add, okay, the more step you add, it creates more layers, it increases the image size. So what you should be trying to use as less command as possible, as less steps as possible, and as clean as possible to minimize the image. Of course, from the base image, this base image also is kind of a reason why, why you have larger images. So say Docker images, okay, I use the command. And see, this image is what? 860 MB. I might not need this big image, and this is not very good to start. I should be using Alpine version or something like that to minimize that one, which I can do later on. You guys can do later on. It's your homework. So use the basic images to reduce this image to just 200 or 100 MB. Okay, it's not be more than that. That's how you do it. So first, use the base. Uh, use the Alpine or smaller version of the uh, the base image that you want to utilize. Then uh, make sure this steps as low as you can do okay you can have to do certain things but not for every single thing say for example you want to use 10 apt packages but 10 installing 10 apt packages or ubuntu or maybe other yum packages you should not have 10 steps instead in one single step 
you should be installing all that that what us so that reduce the image layers that will help you in the optimizing your docker uh, image as well as the container yes guru anything input on that uh Thank so uh, uh saksham was asking can you give me an example of a db using aws secret manager uh this is out of scope uh, for this one it's mm-hmm. it's too complicated um uh, uh, so uh, maybe uh in 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 six months time or 365th day maybe i don't know when uh, when so we will cover we will cover cover uh, but not I, today not today uh, no, not, not today it will be otherwise to already is a you know a long session by the way mm-hmm. i don't want to extend it too much as a yeah thing. and remember sandeep also has a kiddo and a wife <laughs> and we have to let him enjoy the weekend as well uh to order that's the reason i didn't took anything today is kind of free day i already recorded two more video today i want to yeah. release that uh, doc sorry go uh, sample uh, normal scripts and all that session to yeah. that's fine so i see how to understand that uh, i'm sure you guys understand one of the reasons i come in and help sandeep is because i know the amount of effort he puts in uh, uh, to do all those things so yes um so we will cover a lot of things just be bit patient mm-hmm. uh, yeah. what today is just the basics uh, to create a image pull image run an image uh, we will do more complicated things later okay one, one uh, question is good question let me just answer that i uh, know for uh, i think it's very rare to have uh, even more than one uh, command or because you just start a container and container is purpose wise one container do one specific thing either it generate something or process something or may process multiple things but you don't have multiple entry point uh, i didn't say did you see uh, multiple yeah. entry so normally docker are single process things remember a docker image only does one thing runs one node app one tomcat app one java app you have never seen an application which runs five different processes inside it no you can't do that docker has only one process even if you docker run there will be only one process which starts so there is no point in having multiple entry points no mm-hmm. that's the point the thing is think about um, docker images as an isolated process uh uh yes it is being monitored uh, janet yes i'm looking at both at linkedin and and <laughs> and yeah yeah we, we are we are we are <laughs> we are monitoring uh, so yeah coming back uh, docker normally no docker is a single process and we don't met right so it's an application isolation not applications uh, so it's only one one right so no uh, i have never seen multiple entry point to be brutally honest uh, unless uh, sandeep has seen something very no, odd no, no I, 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 i mean i do i do crazy experiment i did one i think one long back maybe 5 6 years back tried i don't know why to be honest i tried but that giving error because even if you just give two cmd and two entry point it start giving error so i i didn't try it maybe let us switch something is there i i'm not aware of okay i'm yeah. not denying the fact but i'm just not aware of okay the thing is it it remember it's like you know having two girlfriends it's not a good idea <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. As so one one doubt is there. Thanks for taking all the doubts. I'm doubt that every time when you go inside the container, uh, login as a root. Can we begin? Yeah. Okay. Now that now I think it's a good exa- uh, time to show the like complete our Docker file <laughs> part that was started. Uh, let me just uh, screen window. Yeah. Okay. I think we had this two parts still remaining. Okay. That is. Uh, uh that label and uh, this user okay see this label part it's kind of adding custom metadata uh, to the uh, container like say who is the creator and all the end level stuff for it you can use it you can skip it as a, as requirement the user part is what you want i probably okay so uh this part okay user uh, said the user uh, the docker image should run as for example user app user so you are saying it it login as a root right simply add this user and then user uh, that you want to add and have pass on the root access and all this thing you can do i will uh, maybe show that uh, we are going to have a lot of session three to five days right some session i might show that how to use different user for different different uh, use cases okay but, but not this presentation it will be too big but this is possible just use this user command okay just to give you a hint you might try on later on this is very easy 
Okay, so I think we covered the Docker file. Uh, we have built uh, the image also. I think just let's sh share the screen and let's hide ourselves. Yeah. Okay. See this. This uh, we can. We have generated what? Uh, let me go one by one app, and see. Uh, becoming a DevOps engineer, you know what? People think that you just need to know one programming language, or maybe some say that you don't need to know any programming language. I want to cover. I'm clear two things. First, many say that you don't need any programming language is the wrong stuff, because as a DevOps engineer, people expect that you can do automation stuff using high level programming. High level programming in the sense there are many programming languages, of course. High level, the most demanded one are Python, Go, and JavaScript. Okay, of course Java and other programming languages. Rust is there, but not everything getting utilized as an automation uh, script that is used widely for the DevOps automation stuff. Now that is clear. Then they say you don't need any programming. Of course, you now understand this wrong stuff. But do you need to learn all programming language? Whatever you are going to utilize uh, with your maybe company, no, you don't have to. You have to just know the basics so that you can optimize that application. You know the basic how to at least run it. You can get that KD from the developer itself. Developer will tell you how to run it. Uh, what are the dependencies you need? And you have to summarize all that into this container Docker file. Okay, because you need to create the container, right? You need to know how to start the app, which is that you should be mentioning the CMD or entry point. You need to know what are the ports getting allowed. You need to know uh, what could be the uh, environment or whatever the environment variables you need to pass on for to application and properly. You don't know how to build the package. All this info you can, of course, get from the developer, or you can just Google about it. You will see tons of information. Okay, so you don't need to learn all the programming languages. But when you're starting, get the KD from the uh, your developer or Google about it. How to run the application? How to uh, make, install the dependencies? And how to maybe create a build? For example, here in Node.js and Python, okay, we are running the final script using the entry point or could be the uh the, the the command part okay but for rust application if you see we are doing what we are directly running the application at binary okay because we can build it we can release get the uh, release build for go also we can create a like final binary just like in rust we are creating final binary go also we can create final binary using go on build and then output flag and then creating the output okay those are the option you uh i mean there are of course third party thing to do it but don't people don't usually go for the uh nodes and python to have the uh, entry point or the final binary final binary you can easily get in the go application and rust so you know, understand if you can generate a final binary that's the best way to do it and you can just pass on that binary to maybe create a multi uh, level build and i will show you how to uh, create a multi level build out of this go image for example now just quickly run. Uh, okay. We already uh, did we create it the build of Go? I think no. Let me just quickly show you how to have the uh, Go uh, same command. Right, command will be to gen to generate the image will be same, but every uh, Docker file will be different based on the application that you are going to containerize that you have to remember or keep in mind. Okay. For example, you already see for Go the Docker file is different. For Node.js the Docker file is different. For uh, Python, the Docker file is different. For Rust application, the Docker file is different. So every programming have its, I mean, um, have its own way. The the base image will have its own way to uh, like build the particular uh, dependency or final binary and to run it. Run, I think run could be if it's finally binary, you can just run it like that. But if it's the uh, programming language, programming binary you have to execute like Python or maybe Node.js, they need to mention the particular programming binary. That's is the differential part. Yeah, exactly. So don't always think that yeah. Docker file will be same. No. Yeah. Uh, every yeah. company has their own policies for doing things. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, in my case, I never create a Docker file. <laughs> uh, I let Maven do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> so please always understand that there is no standard per se, but creating a Docker file is one of the responsibilities of a good doc, uh, of a good devops engineer mm -hmm. right. so but don't assume things remember devops has dev in it and ops in it so you need to understand the dev part as well so communication is the key you have to ask the developers hey what needs to be done it's like you know 
it's like going into uh, like for example when i went to um hmm, sandeep's house i asked oh this chicken has lots of good stuff or what is this sweet obviously i'm going to eat them but it's good to ask right for example now i know that sandeep is non vegetarian so good but what happens like for example if he comes to my home yeah and and um and um if i give him beef of course he will not eat so he has to ask so it's simple like that so it's mm-hmm. always good to ask if you are not 100% sure and once you have done the build share the uh, share the image with developers and tell them to run the application on theirs that's a it's a two way communication always yes yeah. because the devops and then devops you have to have maintain the communication between all the uh, engineers you work on okay that's very important part as well let's go to run it's exporting layers okay and the image is ready so if you run docker images see you have the image and see the size here what goes of course based on the uh, where you pull the image and uh, how you uh, generate or, or copy the code on all those things depends on that but i can reduce the image size by the way you know that how using the multi uh, level build okay and i will show that uh, shortly after i cover a bit more so and by now you guys know uh, okay what is that Uh, okay okay um, thanks for not uh, rendering my question and responding to thanks any okay i think yeah, question got I forgot, uh, to look at the linkedin and youtube at the same time uh, it was my fault not sandeep no actually we can we can see the comments okay i think no you don't have that one right mm-hmm. okay i i can see it uh, both maybe mm-hmm. i think you can also see the comment section you can see yeah i can see the comment but not uh, linkedin and uh, i think i said, sorry this is uh, first time i'm doing moderation so little bit maybe uh, i'm not used to it uh, so by the way i'm now looking at both so i think i'm getting both linkedin and, hmm. and youtube uh, great, great. if you have questions please ask uh, yes uh, yeah sandeep please continue okay okay so now let me just uh, cover few more topic okay because i mean basic by now you guys know how to uh, kind of uh, have the like, people when we need uh, uh, explaining our is mm-hmm. uh, uh, just before you do this uh, mm-hmm. maybe you want to see not everyone is lucky enough like us who have mac where you uh-huh. install docker uh, like you install an app called docker and it will work uh, for windows people my suggestion is uh, if you are using windows 11 or 10 first install something called wsl uh, so yes. if you are using windows machine by default you will not be it will become a pain if you install directly docker desktop my suggestion is first install something called windows wsl which is a one time execution once you do that last for blah 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 you install it and then install docker uh, uh, the application it will become far more easier and it will become far more Uh, productive else you have to install then it will tell you to install wsl then you have to go back and fro you don't need to do that my suggestion is if you are using a new windows machine or it doesn't have docker before is to install wsl first and then install docker that way it will become far more easier for you to work i guess, i think you guys now understand it's good <laughs> okay so docker docker file you guys now know this because you see like this example code you already seen this nothing new uh, you already know uh, how to like make, create a docker file and how to make the build also by now so now what you have to cover and uh, again i will cover the overview of all this okay because of the time constraint also and we don't want to go too much deep into all this okay so now let's like we created the image right but how to work with the images now to run a image okay you can run in different ways okay and uh, how to know what image is running for that also we have command like docker ps to show what is the running uh, currently ex- uh, running image containers docker run to actually start a container from an image now uh, there is to stop container there is a docker stop to remove a container docker rm uh, for docker uh, to see the logs just docker logs and the container id by name also you can do it okay 
Now, all this thing I'll be doing, and this is important. This command, when in interview, if you don't able to answer, that could be a negative point because these commands are so basic. Like Guru, if you take an interview, I mean, suppose the Docker is a skill that is required. What are the questions you're going to ask to the people? The being Docker. To be honest, like uh, I would ask them, how would you know if an let's say if if I'm trying to run an application, let's say on port eighty eighty, and it's saying it's already bound, how would you mm -hmm. find out what is the problem? So then mm -hmm. I will not give, I will not ask. Give me the syntax of Docker Run or <laughs> give me the syntax of Docker PS. No, I would give a scenario if I say Docker Run something with minus p, and it's not running, saying it is this port is already bound. How would you fix it? Then Mr. Sandeep will say, Hey Guru, you're already running an execution, so you will run your Docker PS and see if this exactly. port is already this one. So if it's exactly. already then maybe minus p, you will run with a different port mapping. So yes. this is how you should be running. So my suggestion is, as a DevOps engineer, look at the output of the logs. Don't panic first. Mm. The means your 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 logs are like gold dust. It's like the chicken which I ate in 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 Sandeep's house. They, you need to look at it and you will find ninety percent of the problem. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and yeah, exactly. You, yes. Yeah. Remember uh, issue. That's a good thing. Start maybe. Yes, but if you're running on a Linux machine, yes. Remember, not all the commands may be available. Yeah. 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 So my suggestion is, uh, Docker you know, PS best option. Yeah, exactly. For these cases, Docker PS is the best option. Remember, I'm if you're running a VM uh, like Priya Priyojit, I think yeah, Priyojit. Uh, I'll come to your all question also, but my view is. Uh, uh, I always believe in something being frugal. Remember, not everyone is lucky as me or Sandeep, where we have heavy duty M1 Max with has shitloads of memory. Not everyone is that. So you will not you will be able to install all the tools. So be frugal. And one thing being frugal is install as many less tools as possible so that you can expect... See, a developer may not install everything. So what is in their environment? If you try to replicate, that would be good. Pre, uh, come, uh, one thing with Priyajit asked was a very good question. I would rather use a, a Docker. Okay. Uh, plus Linux Mint virtual machine. Remember, if you install a virtual machine, that also needs a RAM, like 1 GB RAM or 2 GB RAM. You don't know. Right? You can keep it isolated, but think from a developer point of view or a dip or productivity point of view. If you look at that, you install a virtual machine, you load that, and then how to do port mapping, networking, it becomes complicated. So my suggestion is keep things simple. One of the things Docker was invented is to keep things simple. Don't use it in a complicated way, if possible. That is obviously I understand uh, you're a Barcelona guy and you know how Messi will go and do a lot of things that's in your logo. But my suggestion is keep things very, very simple and try not to use too many tools. Okay, I think, yeah, I mean, in case there's a very good uh, good uh, uh, counter question that, uh, I mean, you should run Docker PS, but it's not like it's it's always a, a container running. It mm -hmm. could be some other application running. For example, you're running Postgres. Uh, it's running maybe in the local, yeah. but you're running as a, a container. So yeah, I mean, if you are, say, first step is Docker PS, easily if you see it's not there, then you come to the second option. Maybe uh, it's that, maybe that LS, LSOF command is there, right? To find uh, out what port is, uh, what application running this thing to that port. There are a lot of other as well. Like, uh, not many people know, for 25 years, I never had a Windows production <clears> environment. <throat> <laughs> never. So I know Linux in and out. I have built kernels as well. But trust me, I don't install a lot of stuff. I keep my tool set to very minimum. My suggestion is if something is already running, do a telnet command. <laughs> yes, you are lucky <laughs> if you have 16 GB of an Acer laptop. Uh, trust me, I have 64 GB RAM with an M1 Mac. And 
and it's all company provided, but not everyone is as lucky as as yes. you are. So it, yeah, resources part is something else. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, now let me quickly. I mean, we created the images. Now let me let's try to run it and see hmm. if there's any error. What what are the problem you might face? So I, I'm I'm saying I'm not an expert person. I'm just going to run a container blindly, and I have this commands option here. So how I'm going to do it? Let me do that part. Okay. Uh, I, I think after a long time, I'm using just this particular like, stream yard. <laughs> I used to do what you know the software, right? That just mm. my ex, this this particular tool subscription expiring tomorrow. I have to use fully of that. <laughs> mm. Oh uh, yeah, so you that's the oh, stream yard. Okay, yeah, stream yard. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't use the stream yard for the uh, ecam. Ecam. Oh, you use ecam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's more easy to you know change and all that. Mm, yeah. That's from the next week onwards. Mm. I mean, I'm using now also, but. Would be mm -hmm. only on ecam the next week onwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just uh, share the screen, and that's it. Let me, I think, hide also us because we are not required. Mm -hmm. Okay, so see here, um, we have created what uh, two images, right? So let's go here, get mm -hmm. the image. So Docker, Docker images. We have two images. Go and. Uh, this particular, uh, say, Node.js. Okay. So my daughter is asking to come. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, see what happens when you have a small kiddo. Yeah. If you want to play with me. <laughs> uh, okay. So Docker. Andy, if you run, want uh, me to run, I can do it. If you want me to. So it's fine. I mean, it will be I mean, time taking. Right. So let's do it quickly. I mean, yeah. just only four slides are remaining and four yeah. topics covered. Just run yeah. and few more. I think it will be done in very quick. So uh, Docker run, then uh, the image. Sorry. You're saying something? OK. So Docker run, workshop go, then the tag. And uh, uh, let's see, if you want to run detach mode, you can run D. Uh, other thing is, uh, let's say, uh, if you just run Docker, uh, say Docker run the image URL. And then, for example, if you want to run the port mapping, so let's see what are the port uh, was there in the Go application. You can just go to Docker file and port is what? 503. So P, then maybe I want to redirect my port. Uh, my the, This is the host port, is it three? And this is the container port listening to container. Same same port I will be listening also. So 503. Then bean bash. Let's see. So what? We are seeing the server running. I mean started, right? And in this simple code, let's go to the uh, the Docker, uh, sorry, the Go file, main.go. And it's very simple, okay? We're just running one simple, this one. In the Go, if you just go, it's say okay. Okay? So... Go to the browser and say localhost. And what is the port number? Let's just see the port number first. Is that I think the Docker file we mentioned 503. Let's see if that works or not. Localhost 103. Let's see. Docker. I can just run another terminal and see if something I'm doing wrong. And it's okay. You're going to run first time. You might see also this problem. So let's see. 503 ports and command go up to 475 I think okay, I think I used the wrong way. So let's say I for any reason I did wrong, something wrong. Okay. Control Z or control C. That also now I'm not able to exit. So if you remember in the slide, I have the uh, Docker. Okay. If you see Docker PS, for example, again. I think it's very small. So let me make it a bit more big. So Docker PS and see the, the application is not running. So just me run again and maybe it's, I forgot exactly, but maybe the capital P. So five zero three port. Okay. Let's go to the browser. Okay. So Guru, can you run it? I mean, it is, are you able to run? Uh, which one? Uh, the, the, yeah, five thousand three. That uh, go no, let, me, let me build the. Um, <laughs> okay. I build the node uh, JS one. Let me build okay, the okay. go one. Yeah, just give me yeah, one. It should be also able to walk. 
let me quickly check uh, i because uh, the go app has the docker file of ecr that's why mm. so i have to just go and remove just give me 2 minutes yeah? yeah yeah the same same thing i did yeah because that will not be able to access mm. 127.0.1 because that also sometime happen so okay. let's see you see we are so used to this kind of problem so we are just checking Let's see Docker run go version and five zero three started on what five zero three. Let's see. It might be. Uh, Type in zero zero dot zero dot zero dot zero rather than one twenty seven. Huh? Type oh, start. okay. Yeah, zero dot zero dot zero dot sometimes. Zero Something, dot. Okay, that is also. Sometimes yeah, zero. No. No, no, no. Zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. Let me try that. uh yeah same problem so let me uh, just check doc yeah. okay docker run port mapping let's see sometime maybe the command part is change it's all okay i mean you just need to uh, fix the issue as you go forward okay it's small p only i think yeah this is what we run let's see small okay i run big p but let's see if we just run a small p if that doesn't work we can just try with the uh, node js example But this should work. I mean, when I given the demo long back, it works. So it should be working, and it's listening also. So let's mm -hmm. see. Docker. Uh, Docker. Just do a Docker PS maybe. Just do a Docker PS and see if it's. Yeah, right. not running. It's not running yet. I stopped it. Right. Docker. Yeah. Then uh, see Docker run. This is not the one. Docker. No, you didn't need to create the container and all that. So Docker, then uh, run, then p. Maybe I was not giving at the beginning. Before the container, I have to give it. Just, just try it, okay? P and go map five zero three with five zero three. Then the image, for example, is what workshop at one, and then the bean bash to see how it's running or not. Because the traffic also not coming at that time. Ah, uh, so, it's working for me. Uh, oh, sorry. working, working. Okay, I think yeah. The okay, it's it's all fine when you're running from long to long time. It's happen. I didn't add the code, so it it the the mapping part I was doing wrong. I was providing uh, after the image that was not working. Exactly. It's good to see that. See how how our thought process work. How we are debugging. We hmm. first check maybe is the IP. Maybe for a second check we not able to remember right now. We Google it and that's fine. So yeah. Even see a person like us on the Google does nothing new, but if able to the ultimate goal is to solve the problems when you are mm. working on it. And we just see yeah. because see the traffic was not hitting the the kind of way to debugging while debugging because the moment it hit, I had this kind of data. Okay, that okay, yeah. it's it's hitting there. I am getting okay here, but yeah. if it's not hitting, that means it's not even reaching to the application. And this is yeah. very important when you are debugging the live environment also. Sometimes mm. you have to do it that way. So it's good. So this is. how you can run so what we did here again just as a reminder docker run then dash p to map the port i was doing wrong thing giving after the image no you have to give before the image so i was like this is the host port first one and the second one is the container port so i was running the container container running in the 503 that's a mapping i can just do 80 i can just at 404000 whatever the port i have to run in the host machine that host port this is my local machine and then yeah. the container running in which port 503 okay Yeah, and this is the reason. Maybe, Now uh, we do. Sandeep, do me a favor, kill this, mm -hmm. and run with a different port mapping. That way, it will oh. run. I think yeah, that will. I think people will understand. Nah, uh -huh, yeah, exactly. See. Control C. Yeah, see. kill this Now, one. This is the before uh, that port was like this. After yeah. the mapping was like this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, then this is what's missing there. Yeah. So That's maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's Now, see that it's running or not. Docker PS. Yeah, not yeah. running. Now run so, it. Same command. command. Say I run it on port. Uh, 2005. 2005. <laughs> 2005. That was my, yeah, my daughter was born. Oh, okay, okay. So see, now it's running on what port? 2005. Now, if you go to the browser and just try to reload it, it not work, right? Because yeah. port is changed. Port is now 2005. If you go, see, it's working, and see, it is getting the traffic also. API hitting it. But in the that logs, how... if you see, if in the logs it's saying 5003 because that's the container port. Yeah, that's the container. It does not know that it's running in Docker. Yes. So look at the logs. HTTP started, but you have mapped it to 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 for two thousand and five exactly. Yes. This is the host. I mean, my browser is the host, right? So this is the host, 
and hmm. container that is running if you see the docker ps hmm. this is the container okay and container we have this running on what the 5 zero oh, cpu so this is this is what you mentioned here and hmm. this is what you are running inside the main go folder so if i go here and see your you are running you are saying that it should be put what yeah right. while you are creating the we are mentioning 503 so the application and listen on 503 because you are mentioning it okay here hmm. i can instead of direct this 503 port i could have mentioned i'm uh, face the value from the environment variable also but hmm. we can show it maybe another day anyway for go we have a lot of things coming up right simple <laughs> application complicated so we'll show there tomorrow itself we'll see all this kind of stuff learn all this stuff so yeah you now you know learn that how to uh, start here okay now let's say it's running okay it's running now i want to stop it so i mean anyway i can do control z but that's not the right thing you should be using docker stop and then this particular container id see it stopped here easy okay now for example docker ps is not running anything but there are un um, stop container how to see all that okay so docker ps dash a it will show you all that container that stopped state or exit state now suppose i want to remove that to free up my memory so what i'll do so docker rm then the image id and see it removed similar way just give the new id and you so can give more than one id at the same time oh yeah yeah so that also you can do so oh. just just done docker psa i have two remaining so docker rm just paste one and give space and put the second one you yeah. remove both one so you yeah. can do all that okay, that is there how is one question we... from issue okay uh, the yes. question is uh, he has oh, if you want to mm -hmm. highlight this let me see if i can mm -hmm. highlight it ah yeah. Uh, yeah i so, think i can do it yeah okay so issue uh, remember your question is actually a very good question from nginx expose 9000 but when i do the port mapping on 80 not on 90 what is the use expose here remember nginx is an application on its own they have already defined that it will run on 80 so you by putting an expose will not override it no. but if you look at sandeep's code he has written the code oh. saying expose it in 5003 that's why he's able to change it yeah but by default nginx the binary itself is hard coded map to 80 by default you can change it but that's a different topic so you just because you put expose 9000 doesn't mean that you go to override the application no application remains the same so what you can do is don't put the 9000 doesn't really matter what you can do is when you do the docker run you can say 9000 colon 80 and then it will run so remember just because you put an expose something doesn't mean you can change no, expose, the way. expose hmm. is to make it available to the host okay expose exactly. doesn't make the docker uh, run on the particular port exactly. whatever application you're going to run in that application what you're listening on that matter yeah. the most okay? exactly because yeah. it yeah, my code it was different for node is different for python for rust all are different yeah. okay different exactly yeah, so it's like uh, calling uh, uh, sandeep das um, something else no sandeep das will still be sandeep das Little will be, my, right. yeah, exactly if you put sandeep das colon london of course it's not going to work but if you say sandeep das or guru at uh, kolkata it will not work so it's hard coded right or it's in the application you, you can't change that yes i hope this was a good uh, <laughs> a good question yes, a very good question actually yes okay now i think we are we're very near to the end i will say okay uh, so that's the uh, thing is that okay, one thing sandeep uh, one mm -hmm. uh, couple of times some people have asked uh, mm -hmm. where was it uh, can we give a introduction about agile guru we will keep it at the end for one minute yes, sure. right right at the end yeah yes sure. definitely definitely okay okay so one thing is that uh, i have one experience and i want to know about double shift blocking so that was we'll i will we'll definitely maybe some other okay. session because otherwise it will be too much for today's one we will definitely do it, okay yeah we have like already sure one hours. thing you can do is while he is loading hmm. i understand you have lots of questions uh ping me or ping sandeep separately because remember we have a lot of day. people here so only answering yours then others may feel left out a uh, ping me uh and find my name ajail guru uh, or click on ajailguru.org and you will get all the details but let's uh, 
I understand you have lots of questions, but we have to be fair with other people. And of yes, course, yes. Sandeep also have we have to be very fair because he has a daughter to look after. <laughs> The daughter is crying, so let's screw it fast, okay? Yeah, okay, exactly. so Docker Networking, one uh, person was asking that, uh, like, what, what is the, uh, hmm. so what, one good question is that Docker will exit and stop being, but what do you, so pass the dash T. If you do dash T, it will uh, run on the background. Just your question, okay? That is option to do that. Okay, so Docker Networking was, person was asking a lot of times, so that's why I want to cover that today. Now, Docker Networking, why? When you have multiple containers, and they want to network with each other, want to communicate with each other. Then only we need the Docker networking. And in Docker networking, we can, of course, create the network. We can update the network. We can delete the network. We can inspect the network. And all the commands in the right side, you can see that. So you can see all the commands here. Docker uh, network to create. I mean, to list, you can just run Docker network ls. To create the network, you can create Docker network create. To connect one container network with another container network, you can just, I mean, create a container, uh, first create a network. So Docker network connect the network name and container name. So this is you're connecting one Docker to one network. And you can like this is the same command. You can connect multiple uh, container to one uh, Docker network. So any container in this particular network can communicate with each other. Okay. That's one thing. And you can disconnect using the disconnect command. So Docker network disconnect the network name and the container name and container will disconnect from the network. And then there is a, a Docker network inspect to see the network details. And to remove a Docker network, just Docker RM, then the network. Okay. Now, if you want more detailed one, I think better we'll just have a separate session on this altogether because otherwise it will be too much uh, long. Okay. But just to know, these are the commands and why the reason Docker network we used to uh, like communicate one uh, Docker container with another. And using Docker Compose, you can use that very efficiently, which done behind the scene. Okay. Uh, Docker, uh, by now you know the Docker. Okay, yes, Docker networking mode, I think I was discussing. Maybe I just give a hint there, right? So Docker, there is a total four network. Like, there could be many customized, but in general, bridge mode, host network mode, over the network mode, and MacLan uh, network mode. In the, uh, in the bridge network, the network mode is default network for all the Docker containers. Each container is assigned a IP address on the private network and communicate between containers only allowed within the same network. That's why the networking was important, okay? And container can access outside of the world through the Docker host. So if I'm running a container and from that container, I'm calling some API call. So that's happening via my host machine of this laptop. Okay. Then host network mode. In this network mode, Docker containers share the same network namespace as a Docker host. This means container assign the same IP address as the host IP address. Okay. And they can access network address directly without any network. So it will not use the host network. It will just directly use the internet that way because it's already in the uh, host network. Right. Now, overlay network mode where overlay network mode is used to connect Docker containers across multiple Docker hosts. And the, this mode uses a software developer SDN. Okay. Then in the MacLan network mode, the MacLan uh, network mode allows Docker to be directly connected to the physical network. Which like not the virtualized, again, all three are the virtualized network, but this one allow you to connect with the direct physical network. Okay, and we'll have a separate assigned IP addresses. This is useful on application that require the direct access and not a via uh, network. Okay, and you can okay, do that so run... for people to understand bridges like when I'm in Sandeep's home, because we are in the same room, we can talk to each other. That's bridge. Host is like, for example, uh Sandeep is in one room and I am in the different room, but we're in the same house. Yeah. So then because it's in the same house, but different rooms, we can talk via the door or knock on the door, tuk tuk, and something like that. Overlay networks is something like two different houses. For example, let's say uh, Sandeep gets really angry and throws me out of his home, but I left my laptop in his room. I can then shout from the outside his home, oh, Sandeep. I know you're upset with me. Please, can you give my laptop? So this is like overlay network. Uh, SDN and, for example, Docker Swarm uses overlay network. Yes, uh, yeah. as far as I know. MacLan is like using MAC addresses. MAC itself tells yes. you. This is not the Mac OS of uh, yeah. Mac, no. It's the MAC yeah. address. Remember, yeah, MAC address is always unique. It will never yes. override. So MAC address is always unique. It's the hardware. So each, if you look at your Windows machine or uh, or TCP IP, it will tell you what is your MAC address. There is no chance that two MAC addresses will be same. No, it doesn't know. Yeah. 
It's always, always, always really? unique. So this is that Mac. This is not the Mac OS Mac. No, this is the Mac address Mac. Mac right. address VLAN. Yeah. So this one it is. Okay. So there is uh, in a Docker we have very good feature called Build Kit, and it will optimize the performance of your build and all that. You should be focusing on that as a private device if you are not doing it. Okay. Because you are using Build Kit actively, and of course using Build Kit you can do amazing thing. For example, what happening? Is it visible? Oh, yeah, yes. it is Docker. So, for example, if you run a uh, create a Docker image by default, for example, in my MacBook, it's a ARM sixty four architecture. If I run, I mean, uh, for example, uh, uh, Guru was running a Windows laptop, and I give it to you, Guru, is it going to run? If no. I build the no, right? If no. I'm going to uh, run, the, I mean, now Mac is kind of a Linux kind of, right? Now, if I just build the image and uh, try to run in a Linux machine, that will also not run because the architecture is 86 architecture and my is ARM uh, one. So you need to know about this architecture also, right? So uh, learn about this architecture and you have to build uh, while you're building, you have to specify for which architecture you're building. And the command are there. Just uh, see that one here, that ARM64 Docker build X. Now you're using build X. That's why I told you build X, you should be focusing if you're not doing already. So Docker, BuildX, Build, then the platform, for example, Linux, MD64, for example, ARM v6, v7, ARM64. You have to mention that properly. And that way, we are uh, we can able to build the particular architecture-wise uh, Docker builds. Okay, So that if you are building for um, uh, say, uh, 86, then you, have, you should be using 86 build, right? So that's why it should be it should be important for you guys to know. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's so for example... One. Uh, Sandeep and me, we use uh, M1, Apple M1 Max. Yes, so M1 yes. is based on uh, ARM, right? Uh, and right. for example, iPhones are based on ARM, like the latest mm -hmm. one. But phone, if you phone in general, is, yeah. yeah, all phones iPhone. are tabs. Yeah. Uh, are Samsung ones ARM? No, I don't think so. I think they are based on AMD. Mm -hmm. No, uh, yeah, you're not. I, I AMD, but no AMD. Or Intel, or Intel, or I think it's Intel, but they're on the mobile processor. Yes, mobile yeah. processor. Too. Yeah, but they use, uh, AM, I think, AMD architecture. Uh, but yes. for example, that's one of the things actually Sandeep has taken a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Is um, my suggestion is build the last line multi architecture, but remember, multi uh, the same image. If you build it for multiple architecture, it's a bit slower because yes. it has to emulate all those things. So my suggestion is use Docker build minus platform and put the tag version as proper. For example, you can say build X build minus platform AMD and then set minus T my tag image colon AMD 64. So that way it's explicit. I know it's a bit of more work, but the last line multi tag architecture I have seen that it 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 creates a ten percent more slowness. I have seen this in 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 this one. So use it with caution. My suggestion is also sometimes it creates problems. So my suggestion is if you are creating uh, images for multiple architectures, tag it properly. Minus T my image colon AMD yeah. my for example ARM that you put ARM that way. It becomes you can identify yourself. Yeah, yes. it identifies Identity. it. For example, uh, smart colon my image colon smart. That's Sandeep. My image colon Buddha, which is Guru, because he's an old. <laughs> yes, yeah, Guru is evergreen. Guru is always evergreen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, you guys will just get the uh, slide. I will post on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, After exactly. this session is complete. Yeah. Okay, let's let's quickly cover uh, two important more things. I want to cover that uh, very fast. Is that multi-stage Docker build? Okay. What one thing is that I'm saying is that I we are we don't uh, use like the example that I've shown actually. A very simple one, good for learning. That's why I keep it that way. But in production, we always use the multi-stage build, where to minimize the Docker images and to run that entire container in a very fast way. Okay, for that we use the multi. For example, Node uh, Python example. Okay, where first I'm using the base image as a builder. Okay, so you're getting as builder. Then you are doing all those installation of the modules and everything. Then to run the application, we just you know create another uh, say from 
Python Slim Buster, which is very minimal uh, image. Okay, there you are creating the binary and just final build that you have generated in the in the first stage, first build stage, which is copying the final one and in WHL format, and you are running from the uh, that particular application. This way, the image will be very smaller and you will run more efficiently. Okay, now uh, maybe today is already too much time. I could have shown you, but we have the time crunch, but maybe, I mean, it's it's a challenge that to, uh, 365 has taken, right? So someday I may just only focus on the multi-stage build. So don't worry, we'll cover that in very get a dev later on. Any uh, input on this, uh, Guru, like multi-stage uh, build? Uh, uh, this is normally used in your build application for normal. See, my suggestion is, uh, as but remember Sandeep, when he started egress cost, ingress cost, yes. building all those things, remember, uh, when I started uh, um, my Docker image in, in I don't know, bloody hell, 10, 10 years ago, I don't know, when I started. So I when mean, the Docker part, yeah, exactly. Docker part, I mean, I exactly. also started the moment Docker announced, and maybe after two, three months, I get to know, I say, very interesting we thing. Started, 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 exactly. started, started, started. What happened was, I was working for Volkswagen, and they have their own infrastructure. So what we did, uh, we we built an application for our clients who are part of Volkswagen, not Volkswagen Group, but Volkswagen's consumers. So mm -hmm. what happened? We built the image, and we used to upgrade them so many often. And we didn't build using multi-stage. We built using this, and it was running very fastly. And suddenly, when we got the AWS mm -hmm. build, boom! The build was low, but the egress cost was so much because we were pulling the image from the Docker. Much, yes. So yeah, that's why. So my suggestion is always think two things. One, build your image like mm -hmm. uh, as small as possible, and yes, keep it always. as private as possible, and keep it as near as possible where your application is running to remove the latency and to remove your egress and ingress costs. And by the way, one one bonus tip. You know, you is all, not always have to be a Docker registry, by the way. Yeah. You can generate a zip file or tar file also that you can store in S3. If you want to, like, for any reason, you want to save a cost and don't want to use the registry, you can do it. Just generate yeah. a dot tar file and dot zip file. You can yeah, use Yeah, but that is too much advanced. Uh, Sandeep, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's too much <laughs> I, know. I know, but I was saying, I mean, I may cover it later on, in late, someday, right? So you yeah. might have to subscribe my channel and follow on LinkedIn. So that yeah. way, do you guys have to know that. But yeah, yeah, that is possible and we'll, we'll cover uh, maybe some other. Yeah, things. and the thing is, remember, guys, uh, tar file, it's a tar, you can store it in yes. S3 bucket. Of course, yeah. remember when you create a Docker registry in AWS, ultimately it is put into an S3 bucket anyway. So that's how to do it. But in GCP, when you create a Docker registry or container registry, it's now called, it's not container registry anymore. It's called artifact registry. Uh, then it is stored is in GCS bucket, but uh, you can store it in uh, like uh, also. But my suggestion is be very careful where it is being stored. Put it on a infrastructure, which is very reliable. Don't be a chingus and put it on a very crap server. Because if your Docker registry goes, your application goes, and rebuilding is a expensive uh, thing to do. Yeah. So be very careful, and always, always, always version control after you change your Docker file. Please don't lose it because mm -hmm. I have means my engineers did the mistake of not doing it, and then we have to go and faff around. So once you make a change to Docker file, once it builds and runs, put it back into Git so that it remains as code so that someone else can build. Please don't make a dependency on yourself. Yes, yes, yes. And this is the final thing I want to cover today, OK? Yeah. Let me just uh, show it, this one, OK? Docker login and monitoring. This is important because you will face issues. You will face, face bugs. You might want to debug it. And just know the commands, uh, because anyway, you've seen already how I do that EXCC and all that. Or maybe just I will run a simple quick app and show how to check the logs. Just, just in a few minutes, okay? Just now, for, for now, understand how to check the logs. To check the logs, you will be using a command or uh, option called logs. So Docker logs the container name. Now, if you want to follow the logs on real time, why, how, how is happening? For that, you have Docker uh, logs, that's F, then the container name. To view logs, only the top, uh, till, uh, say, I think top uh, 10, 100. So Docker logs, then the container name, till 100. 
then uh, suppose to set the logging driver because you can have multiple kind of driver okay so docker run dash 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 uh, log driver so the driver name and the image name uh, then do, there, there is docker stat is there docker inspect i mean docker is already seen it right uh, go to for the image part docker ps you already seen docker ps is to see the stop container as well now let me quickly run one docker container and see how i'm checking the logs okay let me do that quickly i think then it will be that is but well, let's just see that part and logs is one of the most used commands yes, for yes, yes. Yeah, that's logs is like gold dust right yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah so let's run it and this time we're going to run the uh, that go that we had not in as a interactive mode but as a like someone asking how to run background right uh, no put a point is run... my suggestion huh? is guys uh, run the image name should always be the last put all the flags up oh, front sorry, sorry. Yeah, See, I, I make the mistake a lot. Yeah, yeah. So always put the flags up front, and then the that's image like should that. be that. That's where you will not complicate things. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a very good I idea. I do that mistake a lot. Okay. Yeah. See, this is creating a final that full ID it generated. Now, if we run a Docker PS. See, this is uh, where this is running. I mean, we have seen that what is the port mapping is done. Now I want to check the logs. So Docker logs. Then this is the container. This F, so I can see the live logs and this. See, I able to see the live logs here. Okay. Now, if I go to a browser and say, go to this particular address, for example, you go to the address. Let's say there. See, okay, and see, I can see the log here. That is, I hit that particular URL from my Mac machine, and what is the all other information that I'm showing up. Okay, this is how thing, uh, uh, mm -hmm. do one thing. Um, Sandeep, hit uh, 0, 0.0 point on your browser slash guru or say uh, or your daughter's name. Some, some, uh, okay. after, yeah, something after you, that I'm not okay, yeah, something see, not yeah. found. Then you will get yeah, yeah, logs, yeah, yeah. four, not four. So, this yes. way, you know that if somebody, oh, I'm getting this bad image, mm -hmm. means somebody has typed in a crap URL. So, these are the things. And remember, especially on web applications, mm -hmm. you need to understand what is the status code, error codes. Yes, yes, this yes. all will be very, very helpful. Okay, this is a web application. But remember, mm -hmm. most of our applications like browser-based or API, mm -hmm. REST APIs, will show you these status codes. So tomorrow, if you want to generate some logs or how many bad URLs were hit, you can do Docker logs and then pipe only for four not four or something like that. Yeah. So just yes. you can do a lot of analysis on those part. So my suggestion is understanding logs and how to look for logs is very 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 important. It's as good as running the applications actually. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my suggestion is uh, mm. looking at the logs should be one of your primary skills, uh, especially if you are running too many containers in a Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> it, it will really yeah. become a pain in the bum, right? So always pay, pay. Uh, uh, yes. I always want very, oh, I can give you a good answer on that. Okay, let's give you a good example. Let's say, uh, uh, I want to, uh, Sandeep, what's your daughter's name? Shananya. Okay, let's say S. It's too much complicated. Sana, Sana. Okay, Sana, Sana. Sana, Sana. Okay. Sana. okay, let's say I want, I have a, uh, uh, I want to hug Sana. But I literally can't go in the night and hug her. She will start screaming her head off. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. Doing now. yeah exactly. She will go bugger off. So normally what will happen? And of course, I'm a trusted resource for Sandeep, but Sandeep will not put Sana in the in the in the balcony because someone can hurt her. So what she will do, what he will do is create a room or he will put Sana beside him. And the only way you can access Sana is via Sandeep or Sandeep's Sandeep is the web server, as they call it, or he's the front end server. So now next time I want to go and uh hug Sana, I will go and ask, hey Sandeep, 
please can you give me access to sana where i can hug her he will say okay but let's say when she is awake but what happens is if if sana is sleeping or gone to her grandma's home then sandeep if i go and say hey sandeep can i have access to sana he will go fine or two because she is not available so if the downstream even though sandeep is available in his house because sana is not available that is why not to why not to is downstream is not available yes so that's why so now what is 500 think, uh, in yeah. in in general i think because 500 and is a server related 500 mm-hmm. 502 whatever 500 i think best way to handle is you have to handle any unexpected errors okay mm. gracefully it should not close that because what happen you know 500 errors happen because you are not able to uh, handle the unhandled error so there are different ways in node js in any programming language mm. there are ways you can handle the exception or errors in any programming language right mm. so you have to handle that most people don't do that that's mm. why their application crashes all the time exactly so so yeah. you have to handle you should start handling errors and mm. you will see your application not getting exit what happened suppose docker is running the application and the moment docker face a error and you are not handling the error properly it will exit the application hmm. the moment you exit the application then only your load balancer or whatever is a, hmm. the request forwarder will start giving you 500 and all this. if uh-huh. there is no load balancer no request forwarder is there or no nginx is there for example then it will, it will be like keep loading and loading browser is not reachable exactly okay. yeah exactly so that, that's so your point not to is if your if the request is not reaching the intended application Mm. we are either a load balancer or nginx server 500 is yeah. an application level problem for example let's say if i'm trying to feed uh, sandeep let's say and let's say he's already full and he's eaten all the chickens and the sweets and what happens is if i try to give him too much food he will start going oh, i'm not feeling well and he will vomit right so that is a runtime error when you find an a, a scenario where it is not handled by the application where there is a code problem or you have not handled an exception you will get 500 remember in 500 the application is up and running but it can't take the request which you are sending find out two is sandeep is not well and is not taking any request so the load balancer there is this house you can't get food anymore because there is no one in the home so that's a good way of explaining things 500 sandeep is there but he is not well 502 means he is not available so the house is locked you can't get any response go away yep i think yes we cover like whatever you plan to cover we cover every single thing yeah. how to like what exactly is docker um, how to create a Im- how, like do basic docker uh, image pooling and how to uh, kind of run a image how to Uh, build image how to using the docker file we learn about the different different uh, the networking uh, commands uh, the log checking commands like we covered most of the things that we supposed to cover today and like normal what happens when the session end people like zero or two or maybe people watch but i see more than 20 people still watching <laughs> so it's great yeah. i mean people have seen throughout the session they mm-hmm. like whoever joined they covered to the complete which i like okay yeah exactly so the the pdf i'm going to share right now okay so that go to my linkedin profile and you'll find uh, just after 2 3 minutes just stay there <laughs> i'm just going to post there and then you can just download it for, so that you can use it whenever you or however you want okay mm-hmm. thank and you guys for staying uh, yeah please play, play with the code uh, play with the code change things and see and the thing is these are very simple applications they don't connect to a database or something so you can play a lot change it or my suggestion is fork it best thing is fork it yes fork, fork the it. application and then you clone do changes do kida kandi if it doesn't work you can revert out and play remember the only way you can learn is playing yeah yes like right. i think yeah that's it guys so thank you for staying this long and um uh, you know uh, uh okay um uh, dm yeah anyway yes, feel free to dm as you like and yeah i have a great event, uh, great weekend to you guys also if you are new to my channel please do like this video i mean not new i mean anyone watching this video at the end till the end share this uh, like this video and share with others if you are new to my channel subscribe it 
guru's channel link guru you just post it in the comment later on or i will just i will also add your i have the channel link i will add in the description also, also okay so go and subscribe his channel he is doing excellent job okay so yes thank you guys for staying this long see you soon in my like tomorrow is the next video right on the go app uh, go development yeah. so make sure to subscribe and uh, click on the uh, bell icon so that you notified the moment i upload it okay again thank you guys see you soon in my next video bye bye okay then see you then guys have a good weekend yeah. bye